Hey developers, have you ever wanted to create your backend visually instead of having it write in in code? Well, today you are in luck because I'm going to show you the new AWS Amplify UI admin interface, which makes it really simple to create your data models authentication using this neat visual tool. Now, I know as a front end developer, some things in the back end are a little bit scary sometimes, so I don't know exactly how they all work. So having a nice tool to see it visually, to pull things together makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up. We're gonna go and, and do a little bit of an overview of what it is, show you the interface, and use the sandbox tool that allows us to do this. But if you're looking for a deep dive in, I'm gonna put a couple of links in the description below for my friends Ali and Natter, who have created full Next.js apps and React apps using this technology. They also work for AWS Amplify. So yeah, checking them out as well. All right, so anytime I start a new technology, I usually like to look at the docs. So here is the docs at docs.amplify.aws. And it talks about the admin UI provides a visual interface to develop apps backends and manage apps content outside of the AWS Management Console. And they even have a tutorial in there. So this is kind of where we're gonna start. This is what I would recommend you guys look at first, but let's just go ahead and look at the sandbox and see what we can do. Okay, so now we are here at the sandbox stage, and in this stage, we don't actually need an AWS Amplify account at all, but we're gonna go ahead and see if we can create a back end, in this case, just the data model part, and see if we can use that inside what we're gonna use today, a plain old view app, view three app. We're gonna have this back end front approach where we're taking the back end first creating that and then creating the front end around it, which might be a little bit different than what you, than what you may be uh, used to with doing the front end first. So you can see here on this page, it says this create an app backend, even says you don't necessarily have to have a AWS account. So we're gonna click get started here. And now it's gonna give us this, uh, ask us a few questions. So you can even like create authentication file storage, but we wanna just choose data to start off with. And it's gonna give us a, a few data models and schemas that we can start off with uh, at, at the beginning. And I'll show you how this works. But just for the sake of this, we're gonna click blank schema. It's gonna create new schema here. And it kind of gives you this blank workspace that has nothing in it. So I'm gonna create these models. And this is kind of like creating an entity relationship database or design, uh, an ERD so, sort of, if you're into the database world. So each model you can assume is like a, uh, more like a database or maybe a table inside a database and this whole page is the database, I should say. So the very simplest version that we could think of for data model is one we've probably used, you've probably heard before is authors and posts. So I'm gonna create something called authors and it has to be capitalized by the way, it'll give you an error if it isn't. And we're gonna do first name and a string and we're gonna have a last name. And you can see here, we can actually choose the type of this field. So it could be a string, int, float, boolean, whatever we want. We're gonna assume both of these are strings. And now we're gonna create another model for posts. Oh, I guess we can call it posts. And in each post, we'll just have text. And what I wanna do is also set up some sort of relationship. So this is a relational database. So we can have something, kind of mean something to something else. So we can have one author can be basically one post should have at least uh well this one author i should say but an author can have many posts so it even has this little add relationship button so we can say post we'll say one author to many posts so one author can be have one post but one post should only have one author sweet and you might even be in a situation where you you need multiple authors per post but we'll just assume it's this way and you can see you even add it over here on the post side it added the author's ID, which makes a lot of sense it's because we wanna make sure that this, I guess you could call it a foreign key into our authors is into our authors table makes sense. So you can, uh, you can look at the posts and then pull the authors from it. Great. So at this point, I think I'm ready to actually try this locally in my, in my app. So it has this nice little next button here at the top. If I click on it, It'll bring me to this test locally in your app. And it gives me this nice little cute dropdown where I can choose iOS, web, or Android. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna do view on this, this tutorial. If you're interested in React or, or Next, uh, definitely check the links in the description below. I put some of my favorite uh, YouTube tutorials in there about this. 
And you can see here, it's telling us now to install the Vue CLI and then to create a new app. And I actually, uh, previous to starting this, I already did it. So here is my plain Jane Vue 3 app out of the box of the latest version of Vue CLI as of this recording. It's nothing too, uh, too amazing. But by the way, before people ask, this is the Synthwave 84 is the actual theme for this. And people always ask how I get the, how it looks a little bit nicer here and a little brighter. So that's what that is. So let's take a look at the, install the Amplify CLI to pull the data model. So it's first it's saying to make sure you have the Amplify CLI installed. Now I had recorded this before and I was running into a problem. And one of the problems I was running into first is I had a really old version of Node so I would make sure install node 14 or 15 as of this recording or use yarn. And uh, also try to make sure that you have the latest and greatest version of Amplify CLI. Some of the older versions will not work and you will run into weird problems where you'll get, you'll get, you'll have issues. It's also make sure too. one th other issue I ran into in the past is when you're creating that data library and that sandbox page, Make sure all the relationships make sense and that everything looks correctly because if something's wrong with that data model that it gets created, it won't be able to do this next step, which is this one. You just click on here, Amplify Pull. So I'm inside the folder that I created the view app from and I already have Amplify CLI installed. So I'm going to just hit enter here and it should magically start pulling. And I let me try that again. I was trying to actually hide the sidebar. My control B wasn't working. So we'll just take a moment. All right. It looks like it successfully created everything. I get this nice, you can probably can't see it completely because my head's in the way, but it says edit your schema. It actually created a GraphQL schema. It created some models for us and it did everything. We'll take a look at that in a second. So if we go back to our handy dandy instructions, it says to make sure you install the Amplify CLI. So we just do an NPM install AWS Amplify. And this will just take a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and installed the Amplify CLI. The next thing I need to do is install this uh, this code snippet in our main JS file. So I'm going to do it right here. And don't worry about this little squiggly line. It just says uh, it's not a weird uh, real word from C spell, which is a library that I use to help do spelling. So that should be it. Now let's take a look. And by the way, it says next thing to do is you can actually uh, save some data and then pull the data. But let's take a look here at what it did to our app project. So here is our VS Studio code. And first you'll notice a new folder called Amplify, which actually has our backend. It has our API. Here's our schema that it created with that uh, posts and authors. And it does all this for us. Now we could uh, make changes, but we're not going to make changes, but this is essentially what it created for us. It even has some configuration files, which we probably don't want to touch. Now it's running some scripts and things in the background to do what we need to do. And you can go into some of these if you needed to and change it because it uses AWS cloud formation. Uh, so if you wanted to add more things, you can definitely do that. What I would recommend if you're watching right now and you're like, cool, I want to do some more things is first uh, use the AWS Amplify CLI to install like authentication, to install like storage, things like that. That's what I would use. But for this example, and we're not even really deploying this yet to production or into our own AWS account. This is just like a sandbox. We're, we're not going to worry about that. Oh, one other thing it did. It created this Amplify folder, but it also created this models folder, which you can see here in TypeScript. Uh, it, this is a, a file. These are files that you can just import in and essentially use these files to do your save, your create, read, update, and delete as we add information in here. As you can see, here's posts, here's authors, here's schemas, but it kind of adds this in here so we can import it in at any time. And so you can see, even says here, here you can create a new post right here. Um, here you have here uh, authors. So probably the first thing you want to do is add an author, but we have an update, delete, query. And I like this, it kind of gives you the little code to check it out. So uh, I don't know what we're gonna, let, let's see if we can create an author at first. Uh, I have this hello world. I'm gonna delete hello world. I'm gonna do a little cleanup here. Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. Hello world. 
and I'm going to do npm run serve to see if I have any errors. So let's see if everything starts up. Okay, so went ahead and started. If we go and open this folder up, or this uh, URL up, I got my hello world, perfect. So let's see if we can actually save or retrieve data. So I'm going to create a new file here. I'm just going to create a button. And the button's going to be called create author. So can we create an author? That is the first question. I'm going to add a click handler to it. I'm going to do it to create author. And obviously, we would do this differently if this wasn't just a demo. But since it's just a demo, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do a create author. Sorry, my clicky keyboard is very clicky. And if we look here, it actually gives us some hints on how we would do this. So we can just add this data store and author at the top of our script tag here. And then we can use it inside our app. We can await data store.save and yeah, just save it in there. So uh, well, let's do that. So in this create authors, it didn't, uh, we're going to make this async. We're going to wait some stuff. Let's see here. Can we make this look a little bit cleaner? Let's see here. I don't know if I can. Let me just clean this up a little bit. That looks a little bit better. I don't know. What do you guys think? Not great. Copy and paste fails. I don't have any prettier or anything auto formatting here, so I'm kind of having to do it all myself. So this new authors, it'll create this new author. I'm going to call it Jim. Jim Smith. And he doesn't have any posts connected to him yet, but let's see here. I just have this Jim Smith here. And if I wanted to list authors, I can go and do a query here where I wait the the query. So I'm going to do another async. I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to just do it right here. Okay. I think I copied right. And this, this const models will do this and I'll put a data method here. I guess we can do it this way. And we'll have a, let's see here. Inside here, we'll have a authors. I'll just have an empty array. And then we can do something like this dot authors equals models. And then up here, just to see this work, we'll put authors here. Okay, so we have a create authors, but let's see if we can actually list the authors too. So we have this query authors. So I'm going to create another button and add a click handler to query authors. And I'll put here query authors. And I'm not going to do any CSS. It's going to make look uh, really ugly, but we're at least going to get an idea of how this should work. So I'm just put a div here. I don't know, I'll have an h1 tag here, an h5 tag here. And in this div, I'm going to do a v. I'm going to do a v4 author, uh, authors author in authors and then we're going to have a key here which we call author.id and then I'm going to just paste in the author which I'll do double curly brackets author dot what is it uh, last name and then author dot first name and let's see if this works okay I'm gonna refresh it I'm going to click create authors a few times and I'm going to click query authors. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so I actually clicked on it more than a few times. So you can see here, uh, here's all the first name, last name. Here it is, Smith, 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 Smith. Uh, did I misspell first underscore last name? Oops, I should do first underscore name. And I'll delete this authors here. I'll make it look a little nicer. I'll reset it. Query authors. Okay, here it is, Smith, Jim. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so we are talking to a database. By the way, the console mentioned a warning that it's not synchronized. So that's fine. As soon as, if we wanted to, we can actually click this deploy to AWS and it would deploy this. But uh, for now, this this is fine. So I'm not going to actually go any further because it's already, uh, we are about 20 minutes in. Um, so I want to ask you guys, is this something you guys want to learn more about? Leave a comment below if you made it all the way into this video at this point. And I can go ahead and create a full uh, blog using this. I just kind of want to show you a quick start of how to get running.
So it even has a little button here how to do relationships. So it tells you like how you do the save, how you would kind of work with one to one, one to one or one to many. Uh, so it'd be kind of fun to do that. And then once you're done, you just click deploy to AWS and it'll ask you if you have an AWS account or not, and then you can deploy it. But I'm gonna stop here. Let me know what you guys think. Really appreciate it. Bye.